Journey into space. The BBC presents Jet Morgan in The World in Peril. Jet Morgan and his crew landed on Mars, but had hardly touched down on the planet when a fleet of Martian spheres appeared overhead. All four men then lost consciousness and awoke to find themselves confined in a dark chamber. They explored their prison as best they could and discovered a lookout hatch in the roof through which, to their amazement, they saw Mars hanging like a great moon in the sky. They could only conclude that during their period of unconsciousness, they had somehow been transported to one of the moons of Mars. Then they found a fifth person in the room. He was alive but unconscious, and Doc laid him on one of the beds which the room contained. A system of watches was started, and whilst two men slept, the other two observed the barren world outside. It was during a watch by Lemmy and Doc that the cover of the small, transparent dome closed. Weird noises were heard, and to Lemmy's infinite discomfort, the stranger got up from his bed and began to walk around. Doc found his way to Jet's bunk to wake him, but the captain was not there. And then Mitch, who was sleeping on the opposite side of the room, woke up. What is it, Lemmy? For Pete's sake, what's going on? Oh, you're awake, boy. Thank goodness. Lemmy. Oh, oh. What are you doing back here? Oh, I must have walked round in a circle. Come back to where I start. Then stay here. Doc, what's that noise? And who closed the lookout hatch? Nobody, Mitch. It closed of its own accord. What's happening? You tell us, mate. Mitch. Yeah? Jet is missing. He's what? Yeah, and that fellow we found unconscious is up and walking around. Lemmy keeps bumping into him. Good heavens! What's that? We don't know. Noises like that have been going on for the last ten minutes or more. Well, I'm coming down, Doc. Keep talking so I can find my way to you. No, Mitch, wait. Stay where you are. Well, why? Look at the floor. It's... it's glowing. Part of it, anyway. A circular patch. Like a transparent manhole. It is a hole. I can see down into it. You can? Yeah, Doc. That must be the entrance to this place. Struth. Oh, blimey. That manhole's opening. It's gone all quiet again. Yeah, but at least we can see something now. Watch out, Doc. I'm coming down. Don't go near that hole, Lemmy. Oh, just taking a look, that's all. Oh, well, don't. Keep well clear until we're sure it's safe. Now, what's all this about Jet being missing? Yeah, that's right, Mitch. He is. Hey! What is it, Lemmy? Over there, by the wall. That geezer, the cold one. It's Ruth. It's Frank Rogers. Yeah. Good night. Frank! Here, yeah, what's the matter with him? What's he staring at me like that for? Mitch, look around for Jet. I'll attend to Rogers. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, you help Mitch, Lemmy. Yes, Doc. Mitch, where are you? Over here, Lemmy, by Jet's bunk. Oh, yeah. Have you found him? Well, give me a chance. I've hardly started looking. Uh, this is the bed he was lying on, isn't it? Yes, mate. Well, he's not here now. So Doc discovered in the dark. Hey, hey, look. Huh? There he is, under the bed. Well, what's he doing down there? Hey, Jet. Jet! Come on, wake up, do you hear? Oh, thank goodness. Hello, Jet boy. How are you feeling? Oh, what's the matter? What? Where... Where's the light coming from? Oh, you're all right, Jet. Well, why shouldn't I be? We thought we'd lost you. Yes, mate, you were lying under the bed. We couldn't find you in the dark. But, but it isn't dark. Good grief, what's that? What, that man owe you yeah. mean? It opened up about five minutes ago. Uh, and what's down there? We don't know. We haven't looked yet. Well, why not? And where's Doc? Over on the other side of the room. That fellow we'd found on the floor turned out to be Frank Rogers. Frank? Yes, Jet. He's regained consciousness and Doc's gone over to him. Here they come, both of them. Out of the way, let me, let me get up. Thank goodness they found you, Jet. Hello, Frank. Do you remember me? What are your orders, Captain Morgan? Uh, he remembers you all right, Jet, but in a confused kind of way. He's conditioned? Yes, but not very deeply. He behaved quite normally for a moment or two just now. But he has to be told what to do. I'm afraid so. But how did he get here? The last we heard from him, he was in a land truck heading down from Polar Base to the Mari Australis. Where does Frank think he is now, Doc? Well, he doesn't seem to know or care very much. Look, do you know where you are, Frank? What are your orders? No, I don't think he does. Pity, I was hoping you might throw some light on how we got here. Well, it looks like we were brought here through that hole in the floor. 
Oh, I wonder where does it lead to? Well, we'll look and see. Come on. Uh, how did this hatch come to be open? Oh, I don't know, Jet. So many things were happening at that time. We heard a low whine, the light came on, and then this hatch opened up of its own accord, apparently. Were you all Lemmy anywhere near the walls at the time? No. Nor me. Why? Well, I thought perhaps you might have accidentally touched a control, as you did, Doc, when that astro hatch opened. No, we didn't touch anything, either of us. Well, the point is, now that it is open, are we going down there? No, Mitch, we're not. Yeah, but perhaps the whole idea is that we should. That's the very reason I think we should stay here. If nothing happens in an hour or so, maybe we'll chance going down. Uh, one of us, at least. Who? Well, that'll be decided later. Meanwhile, now that we have a little light in this place, Mitch and I will search it thoroughly. Uh, Doc, you stay with Frank. See if you can get any sense out of him. Sure, Jet. And what do I do? You'll stay here, by the hole. Eh? Now, keep watch. If you see or hear anybody coming out of it, give a yell. You're darn right I will. I'll yell me head off. <laughs> Jet and Mitch's search of our prison revealed little more than we had already discovered when we first felt our way around it in the dark. As we had surmised, the place was circular in shape, with smooth walls about ten feet high and a dome-shaped roof with a lookout hatch in the center. The little panel Jet and I had found in the dark and which operated the shutter over the hatch refused to function now, even though Jet tried the control a number of times. While the investigation was being carried out, Lemmy sat by the opening in the floor, listening intently for any sound that would herald the approach of visitors, Martian or otherwise. Meanwhile, I made a thorough examination of Frank Rogers. He appeared to be in the same state as Mitch had been when we rescued him from the city in the lack of solace nearly a year ago. He was, in fact, in a partly conditioned state and vacillated between long periods of deep coma or delirium and short periods of normality, during which he was like a man recovering from an anesthetic or the effects of a narcotic drug. But I couldn't get much sense out of him. Then I remembered what Webster, the man who had helped us escape from Mars during our first trip, had told me about partly conditioned Earthmen, at that time with particular reference to Mitch. Well, this isn't a bad case. Almost back to normal. While he's in this sleepy state, it's possible to penetrate right deep down inside a subject's mind. Tell him he's in Africa, and when he wakes up, he'll believe it. That, Dr. Matthews, is the Martian method. On the other hand, put him to sleep now, tell him all that has happened to him since the time his memory failed him, and when he wakes up again, he'll remember everything. Webster's suggestion had worked with Mitch. Maybe it would work with Rogers, too. I waited for one of the moments when he passed from a deeply conditioned state into the stupefied one of near normality. Frank, do you know me? Hello, Doc. What am I doing over here in the Discovery? Is that where you think you are? I should be in the freighter. I was there a minute ago with Whittaker, and he... Whittaker? No, it couldn't have been him. He's dead. He was found in number six. That's right. Are we on the way back to Earth, Doc? No, Frank, we're not. But we did land on Mars, didn't we? You don't remember? Oh, everything's so vague and confused. Frank, I... look at me. Yes, Doc? Can you see my face? Yes, I can. There's not much light, but I can see it. Now, look, I'm going to put you to sleep. When you wake up again, I'm hoping you're going to feel a lot better. Am I sick, Doc? You're going to be all right. Now, look at me, Frank. Now, go to sleep. Go to sleep, and everything will be fine. Go to sleep... Go to sleep and you'll be okay. When you wake up, everything will be okay. He seems to have been asleep for a long time. Mm, maybe. How can we tell? We've no means of measuring time in this place. But he's going to be all right, Doc. I hope so. I think his temperature is rising, his pulse is quickening, and his breathing gets gradually deeper. All good signs. 
It was that way when I deconditioned you, Mitch. Yes, but how soon before we know for sure? Well, if all goes well, he should wake up feeling normal. And how much of the past year will he remember? Well, that I don't know. Mitch remembered nothing until we reminded him of events in which we knew he was involved. But we know nothing of what happened to Frank. Yes, I realize that. And so I think everything that happened to him since we last saw him will be just a blank in his memory. Yeah, but is there no way of getting him to recall events? He must know a lot of things that would be very useful to us. If he could revisit all the places he's been in the last year or more down on Mars, maybe it would jog his memory. A fat chance there is of that. We're not even on Mars. Mm. Oh, keep your voice down, Mitch, and let him sleep. Better if he can wake up on his own good time. Sorry, Doc, I didn't think. Look, let's get over to the other side of the room. We can talk there without disturbing him. Yeah, come on. We'll see how Lemmy's getting on. I've been sitting here listening so hard, my ears are growing. But you've heard nothing? No, mate. Heard nothing and seen nothing. How long is it now since this hatch opened, I wonder? Oh, it must be hours. I seem to have been sitting here forever. It may seem that way, but it probably isn't very long. It must be, Mitch. I'm getting that hungry, and I'd give anything for a drink. Oh, I feel much the same. The time we've been in here might well amount to days. It might well, including the time we were stretched out on those bunks unconscious. Well, I don't think anybody intends to come up here. The hatch opened so we could go down, you mean? Well, why not? Well, if it's an invitation to dinner, they might have told us, whoever they are. Well, why should they? They must know that hunger or thirst will send us down eventually anyway. And what happens when we get down? I hate to think. Well, hungry or not, I'm for staying here. Let them come to us. Look, what difference does it make who goes to whom? But what about Roger's jet? We can't leave him here alone, and I don't want to wake him before he's had his sleep out. How long was it, Doc, before I woke up when I was in Frank's state? <sighs> about 16 hours. Uh. No, Doc, you can't go. And we can't leave you here with only Rogers for company. Of course not. You intend to go down there, then? Oh, yes, Mitch, I do. I don't think we learn anything by just waiting. Then I'm coming with you. No, Mitch, you stay here, too. But you can't go down there alone, mate. I don't intend to. Well, I was going to say. You'll come with me. Me? Be careful, Jet. Do you think I won't be, Doc? Now, let me put on your suit. My suit? But what for? We've no helmets anyway. No, but the radios might be useful should we get separated. Yeah, I suppose they would. Always assuming they work. Very well, then. Get a move on. We start down those steps just as soon as we're dressed. All right, Lemmy, you ready? Yes, mate. Then check your radio, see if it functions. Hello, testing radio. Can you hear me? Yes, Lemmy, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, Jet. Very well, switch off. We'll use them only if we have to. Now, I'll lead the way. Well, take your time. Come on, Lemmy. I'm right behind you, don't worry. Not very easy to walk down. There's no rail to hang on to. Go on, Lemmy, down you go. All right, Mitch, you told me to take me time, didn't you? Uh, Jet's turning the corner already. What's round it, Jet? More steps. Knows how far down they go. Well, wait for me. You're not in that much of a hurry, are you? All right, I'm waiting. Come on. There goes Lemmy round the corner. Now they're both out of sight. Can you hear us? Yes, Miss. We're still descending. Can you see? Yes, there are lights in the wall. Every couple of feet or so. Hey, what's that? The hatch. It's closing. Jet! Jet, come back! Doc, for Pete's sake, don't let it close. Hang on to it. Good, good grief. It makes ah, no difference. Ah. Get your fingers out of the way. Quick. Ah, Doc, they're shut in down there. Jet! Jet! Calm down, Mitch. But they're trapped. Who closed that hatch, and how did they know Jet and Lemmy were in hey, there? wait a minute. Looks like they're coming back. Jet! Jet, can you hear me? No, he can't. That manhole cover's too thick. Mitch, get your suit. Bring it over here. What for? So we can talk to them over the radio. Oh, yeah. Hang on a minute. Oh, hold it, Lemmy. We're doing all we can. Here you are, Doc. Oh, good. Hello, Jet. Hello, Doc. What happened? Oh, you hardly got out of our sight when the hatch closed. We tried to stop it, Jet, but even with both of us hanging onto it, it made no difference. Well, what do we do now? Just stand here with Doc and Mitch staring at us, like we was fish in the Brighton Aquarium? Well, so long as the radios are working, we'll go on, Doc, just as arranged. But um, keep in touch. Okay. Here we go, then. Come on, Lenny. Keep close to me. You don't have to tell me. Oh, there they go. And now they're disappearing round the bend. Round the bend is right. Can you hear me, Jet? Yes, Doc. Still descending. On the second turn now. He's not very loud, is he? Still descending. Mm, no, he isn't. Jet? Yes, Doc? Is your radio okay? You're not very loud. Neither are you. In fact, the further we go down, the fainter you get. Is it the same with you, then? Yes, Jet. But what else do you expect? Our signals are blocked. It's solid rock we're walking through. I don't think there's much we can do about it, Doc. How far down are you now? We're going to lose contact with them altogether soon. Can you still hear us, Doc? Yes, Jet, but only just. I can barely hear you. Uh, what was that? Uh, hello, Jet. What did you say? They must be way down by this time. We've lost contact with them altogether now.
Hello, Doc. Doc, can you hear me? Obviously he can't, Lemmy, so there's no point in calling him anymore. Switch off your radio. But how are we going to let him know if anything happens to us? If anything does, I don't suppose we'll be in a position to let anybody know anything. And what if you and me get separated? There's no guarantee of our keeping in touch with each other. Then we'll see to it that we don't get separated. Well, let's hope it's as easy as that. Oh, if these steps go down much further, we come out on the other side of the moon, if that's what we're on. Wait a minute, Lemmy. Eh? Hey, what's the matter? We've come to the end of the steps. So? Where do they lead to? To a huge open hall. Is there anybody about? Mm, not that I can see. Come on, down to the bottom. Oh, Grand Central Station. What? New York. <laughs> yes, it is rather like that. Are we going out there? Yes, come on. Here, yeah, where's the light coming from? From up in the roof. What kind of a place is this? Look at the walls. See, through those archways, other spiral staircases like the one we just came down. Yeah, where do they lead to then? Other dungeons like ours? Uh, probably. Do you think there are any prisoners in them too? How uh, should I know? But we're not climbing them to find out. Oh, I should hope not. None of those stairs are lit up as ours is. Look, Lemmy. At the far end of the hall. Eh? A much bigger arch leading to a long corridor. That's lit up all right. About the only place leading out of here that is. Then that's where we head for. This place seems to be carved out of solid rock, like a great cave. And beautifully carved it is, too. Oh, look at those designs up there. Yeah, like those rock carvings you see in uh, South America. Aztec or uh, Magya or some such name. Aztec and Maya, Lemmy. Yeah, well, that's what I said. Uh, must have taken years to do. Yeah, yeah, wait a minute. Those pyramids we saw on Mars. Well, what about them? Well, they were step pyramids. You find that kind of thing in South America too, don't you? Remnants of an ancient civilization. Yes, Lemmy, but I'd say the Martian pyramids were more in the nature of the ziggurat. A ziggurat? A ziggurat, a kind of step pyramid built by the ancient Babylonians. Go on. Are those carvings Babylonian too, then? Oh, no, no, Lemmy. Far from it. And neither are those arches with the steps behind them. They look more like what you might find in an old castle. Yes, sort of Norman. Yeah, that's what I meant. Uh, hold it, Lemmy. What's up? I want to take a good look down that corridor before we go any further, that's all. What for? There's nobody in sight. Uh, it's that that makes me cautious. And what difference does it make if we do meet anybody? We've got nowhere to run to. I'm certainly not nipping up any of them dark stairways. I'm going nowhere where I can't see to put me feet. Come on, we'll walk slowly and keep close together. Wait a minute. Listen. What do you hear? Somebody. Somebody singing. What? You must hear it. It's as plain as... Blimey. I can hear that. That's the same noise Doc and me heard upstairs, before that transparent hatch opened. What on earth is it? That noise has stopped, but the singing hasn't. But I don't hear any singing, Lemmy. Well, I do. There. There. Now it's stopped. Where did it seem to come from? I don't know. From all round. Like that noise just now. I couldn't pin it down to any particular direction. But you don't hear it anymore? No, mate. I've been imagining it. I don't think so, Jet. Or perhaps it's connected with that other noise in some way and you thought it sounded like singing. That's what it did sound like and that's what it was. Well, let's keep going. Down the corridor? Yes, and keep your eyes open. Look out for doors or any kind of opening in the walls. Yeah, both walls seem perfectly smooth from here, as far as I can see. Well, watch out, just the same. Yes, Jet. I wonder how Doc and Mitch are getting on up there in the first floor back. Uh, hold it, Lemmy. Now what? Look. Down there on the right, a door. Oh, yeah. Flush with the wall. No wonder we didn't see it before. <laughs> Come on. Here, here, Jet. Now, don't be too hasty. Uh, fits very snugly, doesn't it? Yeah, like it was airtight. Pretty solid, too. Now, now, don't bang too hard, Jet. We might wake somebody up. Uh, how does it open, I wonder? It doesn't. At least not hey? to you. Hey? Who was that? Somebody spoke. Do you think I'm deaf already? Hello? Who are you? Where are you? We didn't realise you were awake. Well, we're supposed to have been asleep then? You were the last time we saw you. All five of you. All five of us? He must know about Frank. Of course we do. We carried you up there and laid you out in the beds. We? Who's we? Where are the rest of you? Or have only two of you woken up? Look, before we answer any more of your questions, would you mind telling us where we are and what's going on? Of course. You're aboard number 734. Oh, thanks very much. That explains everything. 734 what? Asteroid 734. Asteroid? Is that what this is, an asteroid? We thought we were on one of the Martian moons. The moons are already occupied by the enemy. There's no point in taking you there. That all depends on who you mean by enemy. You must be hungry. Oh, indeed I am. I'm famished. 
Then keep walking. Straight down the corridor. There's plenty of food for everybody here. Where? Straight down the corridor, I said. But don't attempt to enter any door until I tell you. There's nothing to be scared of. Yeah, I don't like this jet. You think I do? Look, let's go back to Doc and Mitch. And, uh, starve? Oh, straight down the corridor. Very well, whoever you are. Flynn is my name. Flynn. Very well, Mr. Flynn. We're walking down the corridor now. Good. Stop at the fifth door you come to. Hey, listen. There's that singing again. <coughs> oh, Christ, what's that? Most peculiar taste in music, Lemmy. I can't help it. It's the gypsy in me. Door number five, he said, didn't he? Yes. Well, this is it. Hello? Hello? Hey, Paddy, we're talking to you. Can you hear us? Uh, how did you know my name is Paddy? Well, uh, well, it's a common Irish name, isn't it? And how did you know I was Irish? Oh, uh, I heard you sharpening your shillelagh. Look, we've got as far as the fifth door. Then come on in. But how can we? Oh. Well, that settles that little problem, doesn't it? Are we supposed to go in there? Yes, come on. But this place is hardly bigger than a cupboard. The second door doesn't open until the first one is closed. You mean it's some kind of airlock? Well, you might call it that. Now, when you come in here, are you going to stop out there all day? All day? It was pitch black the last time I took a look outside. In you go, Lemmy. Hey, But you think it's safe? What happens if we get in there and the other door doesn't open? We die of suffocation. Ah, uh, that's a fine thing to say when all I'm doing is trying to help you. Oh, I wish I could believe it, mate. And now you're calling me a prevaricator. Am I? Go on, Lemmy. Well, if you say so, Jet. All right, we're in. Whether we like it or not, he's got us now. Well, come on. What about this other door, eh? Hello? Hello? Hell, now what did I tell you? He has got us. We should never have... Who? Then he was speaking the truth. But who is he? When that door opens, we shall find out. Any sign of them yet, Doc? Uh, no, Mitch. Well, at least the light's still on down there. That's something. I don't see how that helps. Neither do I, really. Oh, I'm sorry, Doc. I'm so agitated, but I reckon I'd be more so if that light went out. While it burns, I feel Jet and Lemmy must still be okay. Oh, I wish I could think the same. I wonder where those steps do lead to. And why did that hatch close the minute they went down them? What if it's a plan to separate us? I don't see how. Whoever opened that door couldn't have known who was going down those steps. No, they couldn't, could they? There's that noise again. That's the third time since Jet and Lemmy left us. I'd give anything to know what's going on, on where we of, are. On one of the Martian moons. Where else can we be? If only we could take another look outside. I suppose that Astro hatch still doesn't function. Mm, I don't know. It ceased to work when that manhole opened. But now it's closed and... Yeah, maybe that has something to do with it. Here it goes anyway. It's working. Struth. And six. Doc, it's so bright. It's sunlight, Mitch, shining directly through that opening. Yeah, it's blinding. I can hardly see. Shall I close it again? Uh, no. We've been in the dark so long, it'll take a little time for our eyes to adjust themselves. Leave it open. I didn't expect to see daylight outside. For some reason, I thought it was perpetual night in this place. I'm beginning to see things a bit better. Oh. Hey, that's Frank. He's waking up. Yeah, no wonder. The sun's shining directly on his face. Then let's move him, quick. Yep. Yeah, uh, pull his bed over into the shadow. There, yeah, that's better. Oh. Where am I? Frank, how are you feeling? What's that noise? Uh, don't worry about it, Frank. Noises like that keep happening. Yeah, but it sounded like a... Like... Like what, Frank? Oh, I don't know, but it's a very familiar noise, Doc. I, I can't seem to place it. You still know who I am, then? Of course. Why shouldn't I? Is he normal, Doc? Has he come out of that conditioned state? Conditioned, Mitch? You know me too, then? Well, why not? Where are we? And... Who left the hatch open? The sun's rays can be dangerous out here. Out here? In space. Isn't that where we are? But what ship is this? Frank, lie down. 
Take it easy for a spell. But what's going on, Doc? Where's Jet and Lemmy? Weren't they here? The last time you woke up, they were here, but they're not here now. Frank, listen to me. Yes, Doc. Can you remember being at Polar Base? Polar Base? Oh, yes, I do. I most certainly do. I was in one of the land trucks. What were you doing there? I was trying to call somebody on the radio. That's right, I was trying to call Earth or Moon Control. Yes, that's right, Frank. Now, then it was him. Hmm. Yes, it all comes back to me now. The discovery had taken off without me. It had gone and left me behind. Frank, that was more than a year ago. What? Yes. Don't you remember flying over the lack of solace in the freighter that crashed? Yes. Yes, I do. And what happened after that? It's important you should try and remember. I don't know. All I remember clearly is arriving at Polar Base in the land truck and finding the discovery had gone. And I tried to call up Earth and tell them. There was more than a year between those events, Frank. Meanwhile, a great deal has happened you've forgotten. Forgotten? But why should I forget? A whole year couldn't be missing just like that. Can you remember what happened then? I... No, I... I can't. I, I remember nothing between crashing in the freighter and... The next minute I was in the wreck of number two. Yes, Frank. Number two. But she crashed on the Mari Astralis. That's right, and her crew disappeared. But that was before your lapse of memory. It all comes back to me now. You and Lemmy and Mitch were in that Martian sphere. I flew over the Lacus Solis and saw you, and then... And then... Oh, there's that noise again. I've heard it before. You have? Many times. The wreck, number two. That has something to do with that noise? No, Mitch. I went back to it alone. But how could you? I did, Doc. I distinctly remember I did, and I tried to get the radio going, tried to call somebody, and then... Well, that's all I remember about that. The next thing I knew, I was at Polar Base trying to contact Earth. It was imperative that I contact Earth. Well, of course, if you'd been left behind. No, it wasn't because of that, Mitch. I had a message, a most important message. I had to get through. There wasn't much time. We heard your call, Frank. You did? But where from? Never mind that now. What was the message? Well, the fleet. Th that was it, the fleet. You thought you were in it? You thought you were still in the original fleet during our first trip here? Oh, no, not our fleet, the Martian fleet. That was it. I had to warn Control. What did you have to warn Control about? About the invasion. The, the invasion? Yes, Doc. I had to tell them that the invasion fleet had left and was already on its way to Earth. That was episode nine of Journey into Space. Taking part in this recording were Andrew Foles as Jet Morgan, Alfie Bass as Lemmy, Guy Kingsley Pointer as Doc, and Don Sharp as Mitch. Other parts were played by David Jacobs and Pat Campbell. The orchestra was conducted by Van Phillips, who also composed the music. Journey into Space was written and produced for the BBC by Charles Chilton. And our journey into space continues tomorrow. Ahead of BBC Television's adaptation of The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells, here at Radio 4 Extra, we're revisiting the infamous American audio version of the novel. Orson Welles terrified the country back in 1938, but why did his drama have such an extreme effect? This weekend, we hear how an economic slump and a war on the horizon fed into the national fear. Orson Welles' great insight, supported by his associate producer, John Houseman, was to exploit this anxiety rather than sing about it by making an old story seem as if it was in the headlines again. People believed anything they heard on the radio. And I, I said, let's do something impossible and, and make them believe it and then tell them, show them that 